According to UNESCO, 258 million children and adolescents around the world are completely excluded from education. In the next two videos, guess why children in poor countries are not able to get an appropriate education and why international cooperation is needed for quality education. As their parents struggle to put food on the table, almost one in ten children around the world is missing out on schooling, helping their family make a living instead. For the first time in two decades, the world is seeing a rise in child labour. We are losing ground in the fight to end child labour. Families are desperate and they are turning to child labour as a last resort. A new UN report shows that an estimated 160 million children aged 5 to 17 were in child labour at the beginning of 2020, an increase of 8.4 million from 2016. That was before the pandemic. The global health crisis has since wiped away jobs and wages, throwing millions more people into poverty. Unless we act to stop it, we could see a further increase in, uh, uh, until the end of 2022, some 9 million in child labour. This would take us further in the wrong direction. Particularly worrying is the significant increase in the number of children in hazardous labour, defined as work that is likely to harm their health, safety or morals. However, not all work carried out by children is considered child labour. In this fishing village in Cambodia, a UN and government-backed programme is helping young people keep their education as well as work in a safer environment. A similar scheme is being run in Guatemala, where young people aged 14 to 29 are learning new skills to work in the local coffee industry. The idea is to improve the overall quality of livelihoods, to try and break the cycle of poverty and child labour. Changing lives through a simple but powerful gift. WSAV's Andrew Davis introduces us to a low country man who is filling shipping containers with something that will make a world of difference was using sheets of cloth with pictures drawn on it to teach the kids the alphabet or numbers or fruits. Roy Austin saw scenes just like that when he went to Kenya three years ago. It spurred him on to create libraries for kids. Now the program has helped students in 378 different schools around the country. In most of the subjects we had only one textbook. So that textbook is there but some pages are missing. Wanjiku Francis is the liaison on the ground in Kenya, helping distribute the books to kids in rural schools. Schools that get only $5.50 per student per year for education, and that includes the schoolhouses. You could see that their faces are lit, and they're so excited. You just look at them and you say, wow, now this is worth it, because this kid is already interested in the books that are there. Enrollment has skyrocketed since we got books. Uh, the scores are going up on the on the tests that they take for the uh, annual exams and parents are coming in in the evening for additional education. What started with mailing a simple box of books from Bluffton is now shipping containers full of thousands of texts and novels, something to improve the education and the lives of all these kids. An opportunity to make this person's life better, easier than it was for me. If this kid will be able to go to Form 1 and be able to construct a complete English sentence, I am able to change someone's life. Andrew Davis, WSAV News 3, on your side. In all, Roy's dream has helped kids in 378 schools in Kenya. He hopes to expand the program to other underprivileged nations around the world. If you would like to help, go to WSAV.com libraries for kids.